Hey folks, welcome to Resolve and Post. My name is Gary and in this video we're going to go over some advanced keyboard shortcuts for DaVinci Resolve. Now if you haven't yet seen part 1 where we go over the basic and essential keyboard shortcuts, I'll leave a link somewhere up here or down in the description below so do check that video out as well. And without further ado, let's just jump right into it. So first, let's talk about the history window. Now technically there is no shortcut key assigned to it by default, but I'll show you how we can do that in just a minute. To access a history window, you have to go to the top left, click edit, history, and then open history window. And then right over here, you see a list of all of the changes that we made to our project since we opened our project. So let me just make a few changes here and there. And as I'm making these changes, you'll notice that all of these changes are being tracked in real time. And then now with the click of a button, we can undo all of the changes that we have just made. Scroll up a little bit on the history window, look for the change that we want to revert to, double click, and then that's it. Or I can even revert the project to how it originally was when I first opened the project. All we have to do is just scroll all the way up, double click on original, and then that's it. There is, however, one thing to keep in mind when working with the history window, and that is all of these track changes will disappear the moment that you close your project or switch to a different project. But with that said, this tool is still a very powerful tool. And that's why the next thing we want to cover is how to customize our keyboard so we can add a shortcut to access the history window. And to do that, first, click on DaVinci Resolve in the top left corner and click on keyboard customization or use the keyboard shortcut control alt K to access this window. Next, click on all commands, click in the search input field and type in the word history. Next, click on the disclosure arrow and then click on the input field and assign any key you want to access the history window. In my case, I'm using the letter H, but of course you can assign any key you want so long that it's still available. And then before closing, don't forget to save, close and done. Next, press Alt K to enable stop and go to last position. If we enable stop and go to last position by pressing Alt K, your playhead will always return to the position of where you started your playback. So if I press spacebar to start playback from this position and then press spacebar once more to stop playback, the playhead will return back to this position. Once more, this time starting the playhead from another position and then using spacebar to start and stop playback. As you can see, the playhead returns back to the position from where it started. You can also access this tool by right clicking right over here. Next shortcut press Alt L to play again. So what that means is Alt L will repeat the exact same playback action that you just performed based on the position of the playhead when you started the playback, which in this case is this position and based on the direction of the playback, which in this case is this direction. Okay, let's go ahead and press Alt L. And as you can see, playback starts from the same position and moves towards the same direction as the previous playback. And now we'll do the same thing, but in reverse. Just make note of the new starting position of the playhead and the direction of the playback. So now when you press Alt L, the playhead goes back to the new position and plays back in reverse, like so. Okay, moving forward. And the next keyboard shortcut is Alt forward slash, which allows us to play from our in point to our out point. In our last video, we covered how we can create in and out points by using the I and the O keys on our keyboard. So let's go ahead and quickly create an in point here and an out point there. Zoom in a couple of times using control plus and then pressing alt forward slash will start our playback from our in point to our out point like so. Once more, press alt forward slash to play from our in point to our out point. The next shortcut is control forward slash for loop playback. Let's go ahead and press control forward slash to activate loop playback. And then you can tell by this icon here turning red that our loop playback has in fact been activated. And then now playback will continuously be looped like so between our in point and our out point. Okay, a couple more to go. The next one we want to cover is duration markers. As mentioned in our last video, we can press M on our keyboard to easily create a marker. And then to easily create a duration marker, all you have to do is hold down Alt on the keyboard and then use your mouse to click and drag the marker to another position in the timeline ruler. And then there you go a quick and simple way to create a duration marker. Okay, next we can use a keyboard shortcut control shift comma to swap a clip to the left. First, have a clip selected 
and then press Control shift comma to swap the clip to the left. Conversely, you can press the keyboard shortcut Control shift period to swap clip to the right. So again, have a clip selected, press Control shift period to swap the clip with the clip to its right. Another method to swap clips is something I like to call ripple drag and drop. And this uses a combination of keyboard shortcuts and your mouse. And all you have to do is hold down the control and shift keys on your keyboard. And then with your mouse, click on a clip and then drag the clip to a new position in the timeline. Okay, and the last set of shortcuts that we want to cover in this video is about some advanced techniques we can use to create in and out points. One of which is by pressing X on your keyboard to mark a clip. And what marking a clip does is that it will create an in and out point around the clip under the position of the playhead, like so. Now let's move the position of the playhead right over here and then press X again to create in and out points around this clip. Once more, press X again to create in and out points around this clip because it's under the playhead. If we have multiple clips from multiple tracks under the playhead, Pressing X will create in and out points around the clip on the lowest track, like this. And then finally, we have Shift A to mark a selection to create in and out points around a selected clip. So simply enough, select a clip, press Shift A to create in and out points around that selected clip. Try once more, select another clip, Shift A to create in and out points around this clip. And one more time, select this clip. Shift A to create in and out points around this clip. Simple, easy, very practical. All right, so we covered a lot of ground, talked about a lot of shortcuts in, the, in this two-part video. Let me know in the comments below which shortcut was your favorite or which one you thought was most insightful. And of course, if you have any questions, drop them down below as well, and I'll be more than happy to answer them as soon as possible. Thank you for watching, and on your way out, please do leave a like if you thought this video was helpful. Subscribe for more, have fun fixing things in post, and I'll catch you on the next one.